everybody. I, I'd just like to first acknowledge that we're meeting tonight on, on Aboriginal land, on, on the stolen land, um, the land of the Jugger and the Turrbal people, and that, that sovereignty um, over this land was never ceded and that it always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And I'll come back to, to the, the question of racism because this, you know, there's, there's a, there is a history of racism in this country and, and um, we're seeing it rear its ugly head once again. Um, but uh, yeah, so Kevin Rudd um, announced on July 19 that the, the announcement was that asylum seekers who come here by boat without a visa will never be settled in Australia. And this marks, I think, and I think everybody in this room thinks uh, a new low for, for Kevin Rudd, uh, for the ALP and for Australia and takes us back further towards the days of the uh, uh, white Australia policy which perhaps in some ways we never really got rid of. Um, this comes after Kevin Rudd's announcement in 2010 where he says that, this was after he was, he was deposed, um, if I return as the leader of the government and prime minister, I will be very clear of one thing, this party and government will not be lurching to the right on the question of asylum seekers. And in 2006, he said, Another great challenge of our age is asylum seekers. The biblical injunction to care for the stranger in our midst is clear. The parable of the Good Samaritan is but one of many which deal with the matter of how we should respond to a vulnerable stranger in our midst. That is why the governments, this is the then uh, LNP government's um, proposal to excise the Australian mainland from the entire Australian migration zone, which then the ALP did, um, years later, and to rely almost exclusively on the so-called Pacific Solution, which the ALP ended up doing, um, should be the cause of great ethical concern for, uh, to all the Chris, uh, Christian churches. So this was the Kevin Rudd, uh, that was the Kevin Rudd of 2006 and then of 2010, and now we have a Kevin Rudd of 2007, uh, 2000 and, well, well Kevin 07, Kevin 13, um, who, is, who is saying that they should all uh, be sent to, to PNG. Now PNG, with 51% a, with a, um, of its people living on less than $2 a day, 61% with no access to clean water, the GDP 134th in the world, it's 173rd in the world for health, 140, uh, 148th for death rates, uh, 168 for life expectancy, illiteracy at 43%, and so on and so on. Homosexuality is illegal in, in Papua New Guinea, um, and which, which, which also raises questions uh, around uh, homosexual asylum seekers. Um, is, is PNG a signatory to the UN uh, Refugee Convention? Yes, but it has seven so-called reservations, which um, include having no commitment to allow rights to work, public education, housing, or freedom of movement. So this, what is called the um, Regional Rese uh, Resettlement Agreement, or Pacific Solution Mark III, is undoubtedly illegal under international law. Asylum seeker boats intercepted by Australia are Australia's responsibility. The fact that asylum seekers will be partially processed in Australia before they are sent to Manus Island also makes them Australia's responsibility. The Refugee Convention refers to obligations by the signatory states to provide protection and resettlement and nowhere considers outsourcing of these obligations to third world, uh, to, to, to third um, countries that are far less capable to provide uh, durable solutions. It also says that asylum seekers must not be discriminated. This is, this is absolutely critical. It also says that asylum seekers must not be discriminated against on the basis of their method of arrival in the signatory state. Um, so Brian's given you a really clear sense of the, the kind of torture inflicted on Tamil asylum seekers, um, firstly at the hands of the Sinhalese army or navy and then, then by the Australian government in, in another way, um, essentially, met, well, physical in this case perhaps, but mental torture um, of being locked up in detention. Refugees are fleeing persecution in Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, so on. They're coming to Australia. This is a huge moral crisis for Australia. 
and I would just like to throw a few quotes in because I think as a member of Socialist Alliance, as a, as a card-carrying socialist, I'd like to quote Che Guevara and say at the risk of seeming ridiculous, let me say that the true revolutionary is guided by a great feeling of love. And I think we should highlight this aspect in, in going out and talking to people is, as Jeff mentioned, is, is to say what kind of society are we trying to build? We, what kind, uh, uh, is it one that's locking the, the doors and not letting people in, or is it um, the kind of uh, society that, um, that is accepting, that, um, that provides for, for everybody who seeks to live here? I'll also throw in a quote from Vladimir Lenin, who says that working class consciousness cannot be genuine political consciousness unless the workers are trained to respond to all cases of tyranny, oppression, violence, and abuse. So that's, that's apparent, this is this horrible person, Lenin, um, who, who has more humanity in him than, than I don't know how many um, Kevin Rudds. Um, but, but, I mean, I, I would like to, to, to point at the, the positives in this situation. So let's take note of the fact that the biggest refugee de demonstrations in a decade or more have recently occurred, two weeks in a row. Um, organized practically overnight in the first case. In the first case. So in Brisbane uh, over the weekend, and I, I imagine that many of you were there, we had over 500 people at King George Square. We had 2,000 people rally in Sydney and some reports of up to 5,000 people in Melbourne. Um, refugee Action Collective meetings have been re-energized in all the major cities uh, with a new layer of people coming along to the organizing meetings for these groups. So this should be seen as a, as a real step forward. It's a shame that it has to get to this, um, to this point before things, um, before our response picks up again, but, but the fact that it is, is, is very encouraging. And I think the, 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 this, the, this new energy coming into the refugee action coalition groups and so on is really important because I think it was Jeff that was saying we need to, we need to broaden this campaign and we also need to build a very long-term campaign because um, and, and a campaign that will certainly go b beyond this uh, election. Opinion polls are showing a continuing concern amongst the Australian public about asylum seekers coming to Australia. So a Lowy poll in March 2013 asked five questions on asylum issues. In response to the question, are you concerned or not concerned about unauthorised asylum seekers coming to Australia by boat? 51% of respondents were very concerned and 23% somewhat concerned. A total of 74% of people saying they're concerned with asylum seekers coming to Australia by boat. A clear majority, 58% favoured, um, were in favour of offshore processing of unauthorised asylum seekers with only 35% against. And this has sort of remained... Um, quite steady over, over the last few years. Um, and recently, um, uh, the, in the Murdoch press, they reported that, the, um, that Kevin Rudd's hardline stance on asylum seekers has lifted uh, Labor's support to its highest level since the 2010 election, with voters now split 50-50. So we have a moral crisis in Australia not a refugee crisis, not an asylum seeker crisis. We have a moral crisis and the crisis has been created by the political establishment We've, who have whipped up a racist hysteria over the last decade or more. Jeff was alluding to this. We do not have a crisis of people seeking asylum in this country. The scale of the hysteria and the, the scale of the bullshit that is, is coming out day in, day out through the Murdoch press is, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure everybody can relate to the, 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 the rage <laughs> that, I, well, that I have felt reading or, or listening to, to statements by Kevin Rudd or reading the press, looking on the front cover of the Australian or the Weekend Australian and, and seeing just vilification of ordinary people coming to this country. 
it's an ongoing, sustained campaign. And Brian has done some myth-busting already, and I'll, I'll just go through a bunch of things. The sustained campaign to make out like refugees coming to this country are illegal or illegitimate. Firstly, it's already been said tonight, it is not illegal to seek asylum in the first place by any means. Secondly, over 90% of all asylum seekers coming by boat to Australia are found to be genuine refugees according to the convention. It's a problem of border security apparently according to, to Tony Abbott and his new plan, um, Operation Sovereign Borders I think he's called it. This sounds about as um, right-wing, um, almost fascistic as you can get. Um, well, Julian Burnside wrote recently a beautiful piece in the Canberra Times and said that border security, if it is at all relevant ever, um, is, is completely irrelevant in this discussion. This is quoting Julian. About four million people arrive in Australia each year by orthodox means. They come for business, holidays, study, etc. If 25,000 a year arrive without authority, it is absurd to suggest that we have lost control of our borders. Our borders are close to watertight. Even if this year's rate of unauthori unauthorised arrivals continued, which is unlikely given our history and geography, 25,000 unauthorised arrivals per year means that border control in this country is effective in 99.3% of cases. That is pretty good. Is it a crisis of our intake? We're taking too many refugees into this country. Chris Bowen recently said, and this is just astounding, we take more refugees per head of Australian population than any other nation in the world. Okay, that doesn't even make any sense. We take either the second or third most in absolute terms, depending on how you calibrate your calculation. Now that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> how can it be absolute depending on how you calibrate it? Absurd. We are 49th in the world based on absolute numbers in terms of intake. We are 62nd in the world based on per capita intake. We are 87th in the world based on GDP. This idea that we're even in the top 10 is just farcical. And the fact that Chris Bowen can, get, can say that and not be locked up is just, and it gets printed. It gets printed in the mainstream press like this is you know, a legitimate thing to say. The next thing is, is, is money. You know, we're spending too much money on these people. They're coming in, they're taking jobs, they're taking, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're paying them too much in terms of social housing, security, whatever. And I'll quote Julian Burnside again. It's a great, great article. So what should Australia do with people who arrive here by boat uh, seeking, seeking asylum? At present, we spend from $200,000 to $450,000 per person per year to detain them on an indefinite basis. The cost depends on whether they are held in a metropolitan detention centre, that's the cheapest option, or remote um, or offshore uh, processing, which is the most expensive, expensive options, and that's what we're looking at, the $450,000 per person per year figure. The government is yet to release the cost of the, the, the PNG plan, and Brian was talking about this, but. Uh, using the Immigration Department's own contracts, estimates of operating processing centres uh, suggest that the uh, expansion of the Manus Island um, detention centre from 600 detainees to 3,000 would initially cost 600 million. That's just the initial cost, and we can expect it to, to, to balloon out. Nauru has already cost over $2 billion in the last few years. So it's clearly not a matter of money. It's clearly, we clearly have the money <laughs> to provide for these people. In fact, the amount of money it would cost to process these pe process, good point, we probably should come up with a better word than that, um, in the community <laughs> to look after these people, to provide for these people, would be a fraction, less than a tenth of the cost that we're currently already shelling out. The next thing that we hear, if all the 
of that fails in terms of the rhetoric from the mainstream parties is the crocodile tears about the deaths at sea. This is, this is the kind of liberal gloss on racist right-wing policies that we hear. The hysteria around deaths at sea that's, that's become the mainstay of this kind of debate over the last year, it's only really become the, the center over the last year or two, is not fundamentally the fault of the people smugglers. On June 21 last year, approximately 100 people drowned off the West Australian coast on their way to seeking asylum in Australia. The boat had been on the verge of capsizing for two days it had made 16 distress signals that the Australian Navy had picked up. But the Australian Navy did not respond until the boat had finally capsized and people drowned. So whose fault is that? Is that the fault of the people smugglers? Or is that the fault of the Australian Navy? <coughs> there are ways of, 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 fixing this, of fixing that problem. You hear a lot of people, I was at the West End Markets on the weekend selling, selling Green Left Weekly with the front cover of, of uh, around refugee rights and, and the woman came up to me and said, look, I'm all for refugees, you know, providing for them and so on, but we have to stop the boats, we have to stop the people smugglers and so on. This is, we have to counter this. We have to get out there and, and talk to people about this. So this hysteria is the result, like I was saying, of a sustained campaign on the behalf of the ruling political and economic elite with the mainstream press as a major weapon. It divides and distracts the Australian working, ordinary working people from real problems at home. That's one of the main things that we also need to be bringing up here, is that it's been, been termed a weapon of mass distraction. That it's not just, uh, you know, people think, you know, Australians are just spontaneously, they're just by their nature racist or something, and Kevin Rudd's just responding to this. No, the hysteria has been implanted in there in the first place. It's been a sustained campaign for over a decade. It, it dates back in other ways much, much longer. And the, the main idea, the main idea is so that, say there are th three million people in Australia living under the poverty line, which there are. Well, that's not a problem that we have to worry about around election time. That nobody's accountable for that. The mainstream parties who polic whose policies um, are, the, uh, are responsible for this. They don't have to answer to that. The fact that coal seam gas, for instance, is ruining our farmland and, our, and, and the water in the Great Artesian Basin um, and, and uh, letting, um, uh, fugitive emissions of methane out into the atmosphere causing um, increase in climate change. No, that, that doesn't need to be, uh, nobody needs to answer to that because we're too busy concerned about a few thousand people coming here by boat. The fact that $2.8 billion is just being cut out of the, the university budget and that, you know, throwing more and more students into deeper and deeper debt no, we don't have to worry about that either. As long as we're fixated on a few <laughs> thousand people coming here by boat. We could go into more and more. The fact that um, over 100,000 well, 100, people or more have, have recently been thrown into poverty, single parents, because their single parents' um, pension has been turned into New Start. Don't need to worry about those people. So it's a tool, it's, a, it's an incredible weapon and Kevin uh, and, um, and John Howard did, did incredibly well and yes, sure, Pauline Hanson sort of pushed things as well, but Kevin Rudd has just excelled himself in this, in this uh, ability to just um, divert an entire um, people's uh, population's attention to, to an issue that, that is, a, is a fabricated crisis. Like I said, it's a moral crisis for Australia that we're doing this to these people, but it's a, it's, it's a fabricated, fabricated crisis in terms of um, the, the amount of people coming over and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, one of, a member of, um, of Socialist Alliance uh, over in, in um, Perth, Sam Wainwright, a local councillor over there, quoted um, famous British Labour MP and Socialist Tony Benn. And he said, 
the way a government treats refugees is very instructive because it shows you how they would treat the rest of us if they thought they could get away with it. <laughs> and I think we should really keep this in mind when we're thinking about this as a tool of mass distraction because while we're distracted, the, 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 um, the effective tax rate for the mining industry has gone from 40% down to less than 14% in one decade. While we've all been distracted by this idea that the problem is a few thousand people coming by boat to this country. While, so while we've been distracted by that, the, the, the profits of the, um, of the four, big four banks have just skyrocketed and we're not seeing a cent of this come back into social um, services, um, public services. Um, back to the Australian people. We get no say over where that money goes. I wanted to make the point, because there is a bit of a, a debate that happens. This is a more uh, question of, of debate on the, on, the, on the left of politics as to whether the Australian working class is, is by nature racist. And I said it wasn't. And I said this, is a, the, this racist campaign is something that's delivered from the, from the top to, to, to d disorient the, the ordinary Australian people. But I do think we have to recognise that the Australian, the majority of the Australian working class, or a section of it, let's say, has a relative privilege in comparison to, to people from the third world. And it's historically had this privilege over 100 years or more. And so while it's not necessarily a racist population. Like, I, I agree with Brian, as Australians can be incredible people. But there is the, the, the basis for, or, or their, their willingness to accept this kind of thing, this fear of the foreigner, because if anything feels precarious, and if an unemployment is on the rise, and if you put it under a bit of stress, if, if full-time employment is hard to come by, much easier to tap into this feeling of, oh, well, we, we should have the privilege. So we, this, is, this is why this campaign is not going to be won overnight, because it's not just a matter of logic. It's a matter of people's whole way of, of, of living for, for a long period of time that needs to be challenged. So it's not something that we can win on the back of a few short rallies, get a few good ideas out there. So come back to the, 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 the point I said at the start, that we need a, a mass, sustained, broad campaign. We need to get the unions on side. We need to get church groups on side. We need to get all the social movements, um, all the refugee groups, all the left-wing groups, um, coordinating and, and united in action and getting this message out there because it's to, to counter this deep-seated um, fear of, of the precariousness of your position, that, that, that white Australians have, when it's been whipped up into a frenzy, into hysteria, does require a lot of work. So we need to be, be aware of this and, and we're going to have to fight long and hard. Um, I'll probably leave it there. I, I just wanted to, to end by, I suppose, reiterating that point, though, around the fact that we've, we've got to take out, we've, we've got to go out and fight this campaign on, on this grounds, but we've also got to go out and fight this campaign around the idea of this, this, this question of distraction. Um, this is a big thing because when people want somebody to blame, they, they're going to find somebody to blame. If there's a problem, and if Australia's mining boom's coming to an end, which it is, and if we go into uh, deeper economic problems, this is what's been happening in Greece, this is what's been happening in Europe, who do you blame? It's a big debate in Europe at the moment. It's, it's a higher level of this because the right wing is gaining great power over there. We need to be ready to, to be able to point the finger at who's responsible for, for, for the economic, political, social problems in our society. Is it the migrants, the refugees and so on, or is it the people like Gina Reinhart, Kevin Rudd, Tony Abbott, Clive Palmer, the people who are ripping us off and so on. We need to be able to answer emphatically the latter and not the former. Anyway, I'll, I'll end it there. Thanks very much. <laughs>